I watched another pre-code Hollywood movie from the early 30s. All these sexy movies. I haven't watched Babyface yet, which one of our viewers sent us. I'm going to get to that soon. I instead watched Midnight Mary, which contains this immortal line of dialogue. What's there to be serious about? The income tax? Tonsils? The decline of the white race? Of course, there's always sex. That's, that's, a, that's a line. <laughs> <laughs> there's a joke in this movie that I don't get. Yeah? I want to share it with you, and maybe you can help me. I'll see what I can do. So Midnight Mary's at a party. She's talking to some guy. The guy walks away. Someone else walks up to her. Was that your husband? No, I haven't any husband. Well then, how about some cheese? She gives him a knowing look and says, no thank you. What does cheese mean? Well, it sounds as though he's offering her cheese. It only sounds like he's offering her cheese. <laughs> he's trying to strike up a conversation with her because he wants to... Are they at a buffet? They're at a party. It is prohibition. Incidentally, um, I never offer you cheese because you are married. Back when I was single, you were giving me cheese all the time. Actually, I did get some cheese from your wife today now that I think about it. I don't like the way you phrased that. <laughs> it's unboxing time. It is unboxing time. Unboxing. 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 Unboxing, boxing, boxing. We are going to open our mail, which we got a lot of big boxes, and we're going to thank our donors. People go to welcome to the basement show.com and contribute. People such as who? Jonathan, Danielle, Aaron, Brian, Kelly Illustrations, Bridget, Austin, Jared, Eden, Ronaldo, Grace, Jason, Shannon, William, Brandon, Joe, Michelle, Reiner, Malcolm, and Benjamin. The rest of our donors to come later. Our buddy Andrew sends us this postcard from the Amsterdam Tulip Museum. Mm. He says, your assumptions about the book The Last Unicorn are correct. Our assumptions that it's better, better. than the movie. All right. Mitch from Fort Wayne, Indiana. There is Mark Twain, who is not Mitch. I'm what not up? from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Whatever happens to these? May we see? They go in a box, I imagine. I have a box that is chock-filled. Pictures like this. Here is that box. Peter sends this postcard from Japan. He's back there on business. This is three months late because he had to wait until his return trip to Japan because the post office was closed. He also has a scenic suggestion on here that we will address in a future scene. It. Ali continues his trip around the world. I finally made it to the Pacific. Panama Canal transit was hectic and done in the dark. History is what happens in the dark. I managed to see mud and had an accidental shandango. He wants to know if we've seen it. I have. I remember it to be a very good movie that did not leave much of an impression on me. I like the movie quite a lot. Oh, my Ollie. worst. Ali is now lost at sea. If you have questions, leave them in the comments down below. We might answer one on the show like we're about to do now. Alex Hawk writes, I know you've mentioned being fans of the Thin Man series, and I was wondering what your favorite one was. Mine is The Thin Man Goes Home. It even has the great Donald Meek in it. That's right, nerdy, nerdy Donald Meek is yes. in the Thin Man series, too. The, the man who lives up to his own name, <laughs> Donald. I watched the second movie, after The Thin Man, and I remember just being blown away by it, particularly by the performance of a very young Jimmy Stewart. I always meant to rewatch it. I found this in a thrift store not too long ago. I excitedly bought it and took it home, and I watched it, and it was okay. The first one is the best. I have only seen the first one. Sometimes I do this where I'll buy an album, I love it so much I won't buy anything else by the artist. I'll read a book and I will not read anything else by that author. Because I just want to preserve this one memory and I don't want it. I think that's up. kind of why I stopped watching the series. I watched the first four. The screenwriters had them have a baby. And as we know, when you have a baby it messes everything up. Yeah. Yeah, it just makes drinking seem a lot more awkward when you have a baby. So yeah, like, and these two, are, fun anymore. these two are drunks. And they remain drunks after the kid is born. How about some cheese? Mm, nah, nah. Liam Carroll writes, I know it's already been established that Craig is not a music fan, uh, but what are some of your favorite books about music? Positively Fourth Street by David Hadju. Hey, do. Hey, do. It's about Bob Dylan, Richard Frenia, and the Baez sisters, Joan and Mimi. And uh, they're kind of intertwining uh, friendships and romantic entanglements 
and the folk scene turning into the rock scene of the early 1960s. All four of the main characters are very exciting, and all of the peripheral people are, too. An excellent music book is Can't Stop, Won't Stop. I don't recall the author's full name. I believe his last name is Chang. And it is a very detailed and thorough history of hip-hop, and uh, just a really great read. He's opening a box. I'm opening an envelope from Mark in Fulton, New York. We've heard from him before. It's Fulton, where the steamships come from, I imagine. Empathy Studios of Front Royal, Virginia. Oh, yeah, we've heard it from them. Wow, we got lots of fun stuff in here. Mark says his girlfriend, Ginny, just returned home from Philadelphia and picked you up some postcards from Eastern State Penitentiary, where Al Capone served time in jail. Where didn't that guy serve time? Ooh, they're big ones. Big. Look at that. Oh. Nice classic. And I imagine they're trying to tell us that Al Capone had a room that nice there. Maybe he did. I don't know. <laughs> this is from Empathy Studios. It's stuff, and I don't see a letter in here. But hey, look at this guy. Jelly Beans Clementine Horse. Hello. That was my voice. He doesn't talk. This looks like it is two penguins. That's Alyssa at Empathy Studios. Of course. First off, for Lorenzo, I am sending a Little Pony plush toy I saw and thought was cute. Second, I'm sending a copy of Follow That Bird. It is a great film for all ages. All of them. It's that bird, if you're wondering. The big one. The Fog and the Howling Scream Queen double feature. Those are two good ones. Hal Holbrook going on here. Alyssa writes, I'm sending you some films and I'm hoping you'll enjoy. The first is the cult classic, Your... It is a wild film with dinosaurs, barbarians, and spaceships. Wow. The second is a Don Knotts movie called The Reluctant Astronaut. Oh, he accidentally gets shot in outer space, I bet. And he gets excited. And Leslie Nielsen is in it. Probably being the straight man. She said that this Microblox uh, kit is for Tona. She knows that Tona likes to get creative. You think they're penguins, but wait until Tona is done with them. She'll get creative. We've made a lot of these episodes here in the basement, 152 to be exact, and so now we're going to recommend something from our back catalog, something for you to check out if you've missed or to re-watch. November is a tough month for this show. The episodes that we release in November just don't seem to get the views that other episodes do, and I think it's YouTube algorithm bullcrap. Anyway, it's not fair. And so I'm going to recommend a, an episode from our previous season, and that is Desperately Seeking Susan. Got very low view counts. Really? But it's a good episode, and it's a movie that Craig picked for us. It is, yeah. It's got Madonna and a bunch of other and it's got people. And it's got that guy that you keep yakking about who I don't know about. Will Patton. Will Patton, his boyfriend, Will Patton. <laughs> it's not my fault he was it, cast in everything over it, the last it, 30 years. It also has semi-obscure... New York scenesters from the 80s, and it's just a its a really nice New York time capsule. The rest of our donors, Scott, Dan, Molly, David, Betty, Kathleen, Michael, Shannon. Michael Shannon. Michael Shannon. It's two different people. Marie, Scott, Mario, Anne, Jennifer, Ashton, Mora, Samuel, T.A., and a pair of Melanies. Can't have too many Melanies. 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 Can't have too many Melanies. You know, John Carpenter, is that you playing the piano? Lithgow. I'm kind of a John Lithgow. You're kind of a Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, well, that, that is something. <laughs> wow. When you play my joint, you're just another act. I'm going to go get the papers. Get the papers. Let's rock and roll. And roll? Uh, I got some rocking in me. <laughs> I love their music. It's so nondescript. I hope those two guys are roommates. <laughs> And we get to see a scene of their home life. Buckaroo gives chase. He's not really giving chase. He's really more giving stroll. For social security cards in the same town in New Jersey, the exact same date. New Jersey. Why? Why? Well, I'm from New Jersey. Every time I hear it, it, it reminds me of home. I am a soldier, and I'm a damn good one. I've got enough decorations to snap a Christmas tree. All I'm trying to say is that I hate Christmas trees, and I will snap them. What is Buckaroo Banzai? Is <laughs> he some sort of government He's everything. Agent? He's just everything. Yeah. Where are we going? Let it in! And real soon! <laughs> and a falsehood triggers a brutal charge. 
and then it will make you make it a pizza. You got to kill the girl. Sha la 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 la. Kill lo, kill lo. He stole my overthruster. That means quickly. I'm gonna trim you into a little tree. We get a lot of mail here at the show, and oftentimes we are sent DVDs. Recently, we were sent this classic, Blazing Saddles. I got a few things to say about Blazing Saddles. Yes. As you know, it was co-written by Richard Pryor. Mm-hmm. And Richard Pryor was supposed to play the role of Black Bart. I think he was unable to do it because the studio would not insure him because of his little cocaine problem. Yes. And so instead they cast Cleavon Little. Thank God. I too am so glad that that happened because Cleavon Little is perfect in this role. Yeah, it's a solid performance, yet it's not a Cleavon Little movie when you watch it. If, was, if Richard Pryor was a lead, it wouldn't be a Mel Brooks movie. It would be a Richard Pryor movie. There yeah. you go. And also, you look back the, in the early 70s, the fact that there's a movie with a black hero that's not a black exploitation movie, that's really got to cover some distance with white audiences. Yeah. And so you, Richard Pryor would be too much of a bad boy. Mm-hmm. You know, Black Bart really has to be part of of the man he name checks, Randolph Scott. Yeah. He's got to have that angel devil quality. Plus, he's a song and dance man. And so that's another element to that performance that yeah. just really makes it shine. And I don't know if I've seen Cleavon Little in anything else. I know. I, you'd yeah. think after this movie, he'd be in a million movies. I think he just did theater. Gene Wilder came in as a last minute replacement for Gig Young. Gig Young, basement alum, he was in Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia. That's right. Another thing about Blazing Saddles. Yes. What's everyone's favorite scene? The fart scene? Yeah. Yeah. That's my least favorite scene in that movie. There's so many other great scenes in there. All right. Would you like some cheese? (coughs) Please, Matt. Please, I'm a married man. There's no Ford report today. That's going to happen next time. But for right now, some more packages. Aaron in Hell's Kitchen. He's written a funny cartoon here. T.A.E. Wrestling Presents from Parts Unknown. This is, of course, the Green Bastard from Trailer Park Boys. Oh, okay. And T.A.E. Wrestling. You know, I sort of feel like Aaron from Hell's Kitchen and T.A. Epley have formed a sort of weird pen pal relationship. (laughs) Just because T.A. keeps showing up in his cartoons. Looks like Therese from McKay, Australia. If that's the Therese that I know from Australia, then say hello to Lexi and Cocky. Hey guys, keep up the great work. Here's another Australian film to watch. Allie's Wedding. Hope you like it. Have you watched Bunny and the Bull yet? Keen to hear your thoughts on it. Have not watched Bunny and the Bull yet. Here's Allie's Wedding. She sends postcards with a platypus on it. Here's something. Coles Bay. Tasmania. The Wall. You have walls in Australia too. Then from Queensland. Green, green Australia. She sends two more Mem Fox books for my little Lorenzo. We have Ten Little Fingers, Ten Little Toes. And Wilfred Gordon McDonald Partridge. That is an Australian book title, if I've ever heard one. <laughs> Let's see what Aaron from Hell's Kitchen has sent in this big box. There's a thing here. There's an envelope for me and an envelope for you. Matt, my father has been a lifelong flea market goer, yard sale shopper, and collector. Recently asked me to help him organize and reduce his collection of lunch boxes, which was one of the largest in the country wow. during the 80s and early 90s. Although this box is rare, it's not in the best shape, and it was the only one that corresponded to a movie you guys have watched on Welcome to the Basement. Three cases of murder? <laughs> It is a yellow submarine lunchbox. Oh, wow. This is cool. I like old lunchboxes. There are some old decals. Alpu. These are the uh, wacky packages stickers. I had those when I was a kid. Alpu. This is neat. Look at this. It's got the sea of holes on the side. Oh, this is so cool. A bunch of postcards. Books Not Bombs, I can get behind that one. A series of Andy Warhol soup cans. Henri Rousseau's Sleeping Gypsy. And good old Abraham Lincoln. Did you have a favorite lunchbox as a kid? No, I don't remember my lunchboxes. I remember being freaked out by a close encounter with a third kind lunchbox that somebody I went to uh, elementary school had. No, I never had a lunchbox when I was a kid. You didn't? No, I ate hot lunch. I had a Mork and Mindy one, I believe. 
Aaron says, my partner Pam once again said, hey, dummy, don't forget Tona. Tona, did you have a favorite lunchbox as a kid? I did. I had a Muppet Show lunchbox. Muppet Show lunchbox. Muppet Show. Oh, that's the coolest lunchbox of all. Aaron knows what Tona likes because he got her a bag of black licorice. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Thanks. What a bountiful unboxing we've had. What do you think, little guy? He doesn't speak English. We hope you had a good time. We hope you'll join us again. Uh, and you can watch the latest episode of Welcome to the Basement coming up this coming Friday. Now, what's next? It flies like a truck. Good. What is a truck? It's like from that uh, David Foster Wallace commencement speech. Just keep telling yourself, this is a truck. <laughs> this is a truck. That one didn't even make sense to me. Nope.